So we're here celebrating Burns and Burns' relationship with this amazing castle, Kenmuir Castle, at the head of Loch Ken, Wendy. Um, now you'd uncovered a song that he'd actually written here. Do you want to tell us more about that? Yeah, the, the tune of the song, Kenmuir's Up and Awa, I knew it as, and I've known it for a number of years as a bagpipe tune, as far as I know. But Burns was, was quite uh, famous for taking tunes and just putting words to them, maybe adapting the tune a little bit as well. So uh, he put words to this uh, and it's called Ken Muir's On in a Wall. And as far as I can and gather, he wrote it about the Viscount Ken Muir, um, who was the grandfather of the uh, Ken Muir that he visited here. Came here, I think, about 1790. Um, but in 1716, the Viscount Ken Muir was executed because he'd supported the first Jacobite rebellion. Ah, that's fascinating. Um, and that's fascinating. Burns, yeah, was a kind of, you know, as we knew, sort of mm. into the Jacobite rebellion and things, but quite a mixture. So he'd written this song uh, about them, uh, and it also has a reference at the end for the flower, the rose that I love the best, the rose that's like the snow, the ah, white rose of, of the course, Jacobite. The Jacobite symbol. My dad was a great Jacobite, so I was brought up with all of this yes. kind of thing. So it was lovely to, to look at the song again, which I'd known as quite a sort of uppy version, but I thought, no, actually, what Burns had put when it was published in the Scots Musical Museum in 1792, he put on that it was to be sung a more stately kind of rhythm, and uh -huh, that's, that's uh, more very steady. Yes. So I adapted it, and with the harp, put in kind of different chords from what you might expect to kind of reflect that I think it's quite a poignant song. So this is a really incredible location. Um, it's typical. Gallo the Galloway area, Galloway Glen's area, is full of these hidden jewels, Wendy. Um, what's your relationship with this? Yeah, place? well, we, I mean, I've been here 20 odd years, but, but I remember bringing our kids, our two boys here, you know, getting them out of the house and uh, coming and exploring around here. And it's just fantastic. We had to watch it, they didn't go too much inside of it yes. uh, with all the, the things, but they just absolutely loved it. And I think it is, yeah, it's so true. There's so many places in Galloway that kind of we know about, but a lot of others don't yes. know about. But and, it's all just and here. There's something beautiful as well about that balance as of, of a, of a building starts to ruin and nature starts taking it back. Mm. Um, is that something that yeah. you... It's almost like rewilding on its own. It is, but yes, uh, the history yes. is still there. You can come and see, and the place where it is in the landscape, yes. I think, is just very amazing. I think you know, there's probably been something here for thousands of years, really. Uh, absolutely. If you, if you look around the panorama, it's mm. absolutely stunning. Mm. Absolutely stunning. Um,
so we here we are, Wendy, at the site of Loch and Brecon, um, and I do believe that Burns came here um, and stayed and probably took in the waters of Loch and Breck well, which is why we're here today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was thinking there's a, a, well, Burns wrote a lot of wonderful little songs and things that might have well have been sung. Um, this is one of the cleaner ones. I just play the tune of it as well, but uh, I like to call it the Grey Twins because the first one's called Wee Willie Grey and the second one's Duncan Grey. Both great tunes. The tunes probably were originally older uh, and he adapted them in and added in words. So Wee Willie Grey is about uh, a little fairy man, basically, all dressed up in different garb How from, the, from the environment. Yeah, roses and willow wands and things. How and wonderful. Duncan Grey is about um, wooing a couple. Duncan Grey came here to woo. Quite well-known song as mm, well. But I also thought playing them on the wee harp and playing them up high had a sort of sound of the well water as well. Follow me into this muddy wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, taking the water, heading back to the inn, just over the road there. And then what do you think would have happened then, Wendy? Uh, I think he probably would have had a, a slightly stronger drink than the water and maybe uh, sung a few of the tunes, that uh, maybe the ones we were doing, maybe other well-known ones. A wee bit of watery whiskey then? A wee bit, probably. Probably more, more whiskey than water. 